In his slave narrative, Douglas Freedom describes his road from slavery to freedom. And at the beginning of the book, Douglas is a slave in both mind and body. Frederick Douglass was born into slavery, so his date of birth is unknown to the public. He saw the worst kinds of suffering. He saw his ancestor get beaten, but he was too young to get beaten for himself. Instead, he suffered without really knowing it. His father was only allowed to meet his mother a handful of times the time she died. As Douglas becomes a young man, he starts fighting to actually be free. When he talks back to his master, his master sends him to work for a notorious slave breaker, Covey, who tries to destroy Douglas's spirit. This is the lowest point in his life. His third epiphany happens. However, when he decides that he'd rather die than be treated like a slave anymore, so the next time Covey tries to whip him, he stands up to him, and after a two-hour fight, Covey leaves him alone. Garrison starts out by telling us about the first time he heard Frederick Douglass speak in public at an anti-slavery convention. At first, Douglass didn't want to stand up and tell his story. This is his final epiphany. Even after he acquires his own freedom, he realizes he can't rest until all slavery is abolished. He writes the narrative of his life to teach others, white and black, how to follow in his footsteps. He lived in the family of Master Yu in Baltimore for seven years. During that time, many said that was when Frederick Douglass first learned how to read and write. The first person to teach Frederick Douglass on how to read and write was Miss Owl, his mistress. The only reason why she decided to teach Frederick Douglass on how to read and write was because she believed in treating another human being like another human being should be treated. Frederick Douglass was living with Miss Owl at this time and described her as the most kind and tender-hearted person there was. Douglass said that she always had food for the poor, clothes for the naked, and would comfort every mourner that came within her reach. But slavery soon put a split in her household. Miss Owl's husband demanded that no slave should know how to read or write, so this prevented Frederick Douglass from becoming even more literate. Like her husband, Miss Owl believed that slavery and education was incompatible with each other and that a slave could not be educated at all. If Douglas was seen with a book, newspaper, or even just a sheet of paper, it was immediately snatched out of his hands because people would believe that he was trying to read again. But Douglas was determined to become literate. He always walked around with a copy of Webster's spelling book in his pocket. Frederick Douglass also had some of his friends teach him how to read, sometimes when he was out running errands, and he would pay them back by giving them food like bread. While a slave, Douglass always dreamt of freedom. When he was with white kids, he would always say to them while sitting on a cellar door, I wish I could be free, as you will be when you get to be men. Douglass's own friends also encouraged him to get his freedom. They did not believe God ever made anyone to be a slave. Over and over again, they told him that. But as Douglas grew older and grew more skillful in reading and writing, he began to realize that there was no end to his bondage. 
and that he would be a slave for life. When saving up enough money, Douglas bought the Columbian Orator, a popular school book, and he believed that he was his prized treasure. After reading the dialogue and the speeches that were all in the book, he believed that it shed light on the principles of liberty and poured floods of light on the nature and the character of slavery. After further educating himself, Douglas believed that he found true knowledge and that this true knowledge opened his eyes to a horrible pit and revealed the teeth of the frightful dragon that was ready to pounce upon him, which represented slavery. The only thing that was on Douglas's mind was his liberty and freedom. In the end, Frederick Douglass does not blame Miss Al for the way she treated him, only believing that nature had turned them into friends and slavery turned them into enemies.